Yo, it's him. My name's Ben, and today we're going to have a look at adrenergic receptors. So these are the receptors in our sympathetic nervous system, so we can have a sympathetic response. So remember, our sympathetic nervous system is the fight, flight, fright. So I'm running away from a tiger, I'm battling a butterfly. All right, if we start with alpha-1, we have alpha-1 receptors, and they're in our liver, the smooth muscles of our blood vessels. And what they do is if we've got to battle a tiger, in our liver, our alpha-1 receptors will cause glycogenolysis. So glycogen, stored sugar, lysis to break down. So it's going to break down our stored sugar to release it into the bloodstream. And gluconeogenesis, so gluco, glucose, neo, new, Genesis creation, like the first book of the Bible. So this is going to create more glucose from non-carbohydrate sources to feed more glucose into our blood vessels. Perfect if we're battling a tiger. Then our alpha-1 receptors on the smooth muscle of blood vessels are going to cause vasoconstriction. Who cares? Well, if we're fighting a tiger, if we have vasoconstriction, this is going to increase the total peripheral resistance. We have blood vessels clamping down, so therefore we're going to have an increase in blood pressure. Because remember, blood pressure is cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. So if we're increasing our blood pressure, we're going to help to improve the flow of blood around our body so we can fight the tiger. These blood vessels are going to be in our skin, and our abdominal viscera, our organs in our stomach, and our digestive tract, and our kidneys. So those are our alpha-1 receptors. Our alpha-2 receptors, we've got these in our pancreas, and this is going to increase insulin secretion. So again, we're running away from a horde of wild butterflies, and if we release insulin, insulin's job is to pull blood glucose out of the blood and put it into the cells, for example our muscles, so we can use it to create energy to fight a tiger. And then also we've got alpha-2 receptors in our platelets, so they're going to help with clotting. If we're fighting a tiger and we get bitten or scratched, it's going to help clot and stop us from bleeding. Alpha-1, alpha-2. Then we come to our beta receptors. Beta-1 receptors, beta-1, one heart are found in our SO node, so sinoatrial node, our AV node, atrioventricular node, and in the myocardium. So remember, myo means muscle, cardium, cardi, heart. So the muscle of our heart. These ones, our SA node is going to cause an increase in heart, heart rate. And this is called a tronotropic effect. And then our AV node is going to increase electrical conduction speed. The electrical current, the message coming from the SA node, gets delayed in the AV node before going to the ventricles. So when we stimulate our beta-1 receptors, it increases that conduction speed. It's going to increase our heart rate, and that's called dromotropy. And then in our myocardium, our beta-1 receptors are going to increase contractility, which is known as enotropy. So I see these funny words, chronotropy, like chronological, like a clock, increasing heart rate, dromotropy, increasing electrical conduction speed, and enotropy, increased contractility, because get used to those three words, because often when you're reading things, or you're looking at drugs, or a pathology, it may have a positive chronotropic effect. And you know chronotropy is to do with heart rate. Those beta receptors in our heart, beta 1, we also have beta 1 receptors in our kidney. So if you remember back when we were talking about the RAS, we had juxtaglomerular cells. So juxta, beside, glomerulus is the filter, the start of the filter of the nephron in the kidney. So our juxtaglomerular cells have beta 1 receptors. And if our sympathetic nervous system simulates them, it's going to cause the release of renin, which starts off our RAS. And our RAS um, helps to increase blood pressure. So again, 
if we're running away from a tiger, we want increased blood pressure so we can increase the circulation of all the good stuff that we need to battle the tiger. Lovely. So there our beta 1 and then our beta 2. So think beta 2, two lungs. In our beta 2 receptors, we found them in our bronchial smooth muscle of our lung. So our bronchioles are our airways and our beta 2 receptors are going to cause bronchodilation. So if we bronchodilate, our airways are going to open up. Again, if we're running away from a herd of butterflies, if we open up our airways, we're going to allow more air to get out of our lungs, so therefore more air, more oxygen that we can transport to our cells, create energy. We also have beta 2 receptors in the blood vessel that goes through our skeletal muscle. So these beta 2 receptors are going to cause vasodilation. To increase blood pressure, our alpha 1 receptors cause vasoconstriction, but they were going to the skin and our organs. But our beta 2 receptors are going to vasodilate because these ones go to our skeletal muscle. So it's the muscle that we want the blood going to because that's the thing that has to contract so we can battle the butterflies. Then we also have beta 2 receptors in our mast cells. So our mast cells, they're a type of white blood cell and they have little granules with inflammatory mediators like histamine inside them. And when an allergen comes in and they're stimulated, they degranulate, which means the granules inside them uh, get released outside and they explode like grenades and they release the inflammatory mediators. For example, histamine goes all over the place and now we've got a big inflammatory response. If we're running away from a tiger, we're not worried about repairing tissues because that's the job when we rest and digest in the parasympathetic nervous system. So our beta 2 receptors on our mast cells will stabilize them and stop the inflammatory process. Really important when we look at allergic reactions and asthma. And then also we have our beta 2 receptors in our liver. These ones are going to promote glycogenolysis, similar to our alpha 1, and gluconeogenesis, similar to our alpha 1 receptors. So again, it's all about getting glucose or creating glucose and putting it into the blood so that we've got a, a fuel source to do our fight, flight, fright. And then lastly, we've got beta 3 receptors and we find them in our adipose tissue. So right here, they're going to cause lipolysis. So lipo, fat, lysis, breakdown. So stimulation of our beta-3 receptors is going to cause the breakdown of fat. And there we have it. So this is our adrenergic receptors. So our sympathetic receptors when we have a sympathetic response. And this is what they do. All right. Happy studying, team.